Jesus, what's happening? Kona, what are you doing? That didn't go as planned. I'm Zach George, I'm a dog trainer. Meet my new project, Kona. I've got just three weeks to train her and set her up for the most well-behaved life possible. That means I need to work on the most common puppy issues like potty training, how to actually pay attention, stopping things like play biting, chewing, separation anxiety, getting along with other animals, leash walking, and teaching her everything a good dog needs to know. Real dog training doesn't always go smoothly, and that's why I'm going to show you every success and mistake and how I work through all the most challenging parts of raising a new puppy. Welcome to your new puppy survival guide. Today we've got some really important training to do with Kona and time is running out. Let's see how creative Inertia's boxes are from Bark this month. This is the super chewer box here. So for dogs that are really rough on toys that can really destroy anything, super chewer is probably for you. An XO chew, look how creative. Is that a plush toy in a super? Oh, okay. You can tell the second you pick it up that it's like really heavy underneath this. So it's kind of designed for this to get ripped off, I'm guessing. It's a snuggalore. If your dog does like to tear it off, they'll find a very durable toy underneath. We have a couple of bags of really high-end treats here as well. And of course, extra chews since it's a super chewer box. Bark box toys are always really plushy and really fun, which is really enticing for inertia. But look at this, it's a cup of noodles. That's the most adorable tag I've ever seen. I know they'd put these on here just for her. This one's main squeeze cheese. Okay, so it's a dinner date theme. I melt for you. And BarkBox also gives you a couple of bags of really awesome treats. All of you can get a free BarkBox, Super Chewer Box, or both by going to my special link and signing up for a six or 12 month plan. I'll have those links in the description. Okay, let me talk to my multi-dog households for a minute. Just having an additional dog in the environment when you're training a new dog can not only be distracting to the new dog, but to your older dog and even to you. And so ideally when you're training a dog, especially a new one, you really need to be 100% focused on them. But there is a moment where you have to teach the older dog, in this case, you know who, how to behave while I'm training this girl. You might have noticed to this point, most of our training sessions happen one-on-one. -on -one. That's because I don't want Kona distracted. And Inertia doesn't have that much experience of just checking out while I work with another dog. So I have to really teach her that. This is actually gonna be my first training session with Inertia where I'm really focused on teaching her how to hold her stay while I work with a young puppy over here. So I guess I'll start over here by saying settle. Good. Kona gonna intercept Kona over here with a treat. Sit. Good girl. You're doing, can you settle? Relax. Okay, I'm just looking for a little more of a relaxed body position, trying to get her into that settled state of mind. Kona. That's gonna be tough, obviously, when Kona gets close. That's gonna make her uh, break. Settle. Relax. Can you relax? There she goes. I think that looks a little more relaxed. What do you think? Good girl. Kona, here. All right. So let's see what happens as we do a little bit of reviewing here with Kona. Let's see how her bow is looking, for example. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to get a little more duration. Okay. Good girl, stay. I'm gonna reiterate, stay over there. To inertia, you're doing a good job, inertia. I mean, it's hard to divide your attention here, and that's why I'm starting off with stuff that Kona is pretty familiar with. Yes. Okay, stay, lie down. <laughs> I had a hunch there that, good girl, I had a hunch that when I said okay to her that she was gonna snap out. So here she's a little confused. She's like, what are we doing? Why do I have to stay in this particular situation? Inertia, come. Settle. Good, like the relaxed hips there. Kona, come. I'm not gonna reward her with food right now. I'm gonna make her do a little better than that because I've got faith in her. So bow is looking great. How about spin, let's see. Good girl, Inertia, you're doing a great job back there. Yes. Good, I see, I know that Inertia responds so much when I get excited, so I'm curious to see what happens if I give an enthusiastic, like, yes. Good. 
Ready? All right, Conan. Spin. Good girl. Yes. Good. Lie down. See what I mean? I knew she's gonna do that. I know my dog. This is what I mean when I say be one step ahead of your dog. No one knows your dog like you, so you can probably anticipate their behavior. I wanna focus a little bit on that. I wanna be able to say, yes! Good girl. Stay. Good. Oh, what's this? Kona. Yes! Good girl. Okay, good. So I, I also wanna go ahead and catch inertia succeeding there and let her know that I appreciate that she held that settle and didn't interfere with my training session. This jumping up on the table thing, that's gotta go. And I'm hoping to get like a super basic puppy heel out of her in the few days that I have left with her. I admit this is probably a little too advanced for a young dog like Kona, but Kona isn't just any puppy. Kona, I was just telling everyone how great you were. <sighs> Gosh, oh man. Kona, come. I'm still gonna go ahead and reward her for coming to me there because look, I've let down my guard because I'm talking to you guys and not supervising this puppy that I'm supposed to be training. I'm gonna use Kona's kibble because I want to really be able to give her lots of treats during this. This is actually her lunch. This way I can basically give her unlimited treats without feeling too guilty, since an activity like this really requires a high rate of reinforcement. So I'll start off by rapid firing treats into her mouth for just duration for a period of time here. If she so much as holds the heel position for like 0.1 seconds, I'm going to acknowledge that by telling her yes and giving her a small treat. As I continue to work on Kona's heel, I know I'm gonna be exceptionally focused, so I'm not gonna be in a position to intercept inertia quite as quickly, but this should put her to the test. We'll see how she does. Inertia, lie down. Look at me. Stay. Relax. Settle. Good. Good real world settle right there. Do you see the difference in body language? So while we initially taught her to go into this position by luring her, I'm really trying to get her to understand that I want her to hold this position even when there isn't a treat right at her nose. Look at me. Here. Yes. Here. Yes. Okay, I'm obviously moving a little fast here in order to see if I can get a good example for you guys, just so you can kind of get the gist of what we're trying to do here. Yes. It looks like I'm losing Kona a little bit right now. She's kind of drifting off and even biting me a little bit. And she's even biting at my clothes, which probably means she's a little frustrated. So I've got a couple of options to consider. I mean, I could stop the session right now, or I could try using a currency that might be a little bit more exciting to Kona. All right, I'm gonna go grab some rotisserie chicken. Let's see if that's more enticing to her. What's this? Yes. 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 Okay, stay, lie down. I knew you were gonna do that. Good girl. So she's taking treats extremely rough there. I mean, you can see, you gotta be really careful when you're doing this. We can't really go much further in this training session until I show you how to deal with a dog who's biting way too hard to get treats. I got Nick pretty good twice there. And that's probably because I haven't really taken the time to show her how to take a high value currency like real chicken in a very gentle way. It's clearly very exciting to her. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. The way that I do it probably isn't the recommended way for everyone, but I like to hold a, a chunk of meat like this and not really release it until they're licking. Yes. I don't know if you can see how she's licking and not biting. Yes. That's how I'm holding it. I mean, I know it's not the prettiest thing to look at guys, but I'm giving her very limited access. But if I start feeling teeth on me, then I just kind of close. You see, I just close my, I just close it off. You know, I'm like, hey, that made the chicken go away, or I might even pull my hand away. I'm gonna give you an alternative way to do this. Now, with other dogs, you might be a little reluctant to even try this because they might bite way too hard, or you're just not comfortable with it either way. Another way, and probably more preferred way to do this, is to show them you got a treat. I mean, she knows to leave it here. The reason I'm going in really slowly here and then pulling it away, if she comes at me all excitedly, she's like, awesome, I, I get it. I, I'm really trying to communicate to her here that you have to have really specific actions, really specific manners to get this piece of chicken. You don't need a big piece like that anyway. Easy. Easy, gentle. Good girl, and there's lots of licking going on there. I like that. Look at how she's not biting at me. I'm gonna cut, ah, easy. I'm also doing this open palm. So treating your dog open palm is a way to really get around getting bit. Most dogs are not gonna bite your hand. They're just gonna lick it right out of your hand. Now, of course, that was a little hard to do during our heel training session. It's a little better. 
Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. By the way, good job, Inertia. I'm proud of her so far. <laughs> She's getting better. Yes. Easy. Yes. Easy. Easy. See the licking there? It's already getting better. See that? So she's making progress here, so I'll continue to work on that. It would be perfectly normal and natural for her to regress to the biting, at which time I would want to re-explain to her, you know, remember, this is how we do it. So be tolerant of relapses with your dog. They're still young and still learning. Lie down, play dead, stay. Kona, look at me. Kona. Yes. Look at me. Okay, Kona. <laughs> okay, inertia, good job. So that's good. They're starting to get the hang of it, aren't they? Looks like we have another issue to deal with. She's been doing this a lot lately. She's now gotten tall enough to jump on the table. This wasn't the case when she first moved in with us. However, now it seems to be an issue and another thing that needs our attention before it gets out of hand, if it's not already. All right, time to work on your counter surfing. So what have we been doing to this point, right? We've been saying, hey, Kona, come. Just doing something in, oh, let me focus on her. Kona, come. Yes, good girl. Now, a lot of people might say, hey, Zach, you just rewarded her for jumping up there, but I didn't. I did not. I rewarded her for coming to me and abandoning the action. So here, obviously, I'm focused on talking to you guys, so I'm a little late. Um, I should prevent her from doing this in the first place, especially when she's being so obvious about it. Kona, come. So her behavior is predictable. I guess she's probably gonna run back there and jump up. Let me intercept her. Kona, come. Yes. This is what I mean by getting to know your dog and read your dog. Yes. Let me reward her for staying here and not jumping up. This is not the kind of thing you like resolve quickly. You wanna be really consistent, one step ahead of your dog. I could make her life easier by not putting the temptations right there. Since she's a pretty bright dog, I feel like it's somewhat reasonable to be able to start phasing in this concept of just because it's in your reach doesn't mean you get access to it. That is our third accident in five days. Do you remember when we took her out of the crate? Yes. We went into shooting mode instead of taking her outside. I just yeah. realized it too. Potty training tip. Anytime you let your dog out of the crate, especially if they've been sleeping, even if it's just for 10 minutes, outside is the next step. You still can't expect a 14 week old dog to be perfect on potty training, but no excuse, I could have done better there. It's a good example of trainer error. Now Kona has done great with her toys up here and the occasional dog treats. I wanna put something a little bit more tempting. I mean, after all, I want Kona at some point to know that she needs to have the discipline to leave it alone. Now, if I know Kona, and I've gotten to know her pretty well so far, I'm, I'm thinking that if I were to just very obviously set that plate down, she might do exactly that. Nice try, you are not getting that chicken. But let me see if I can call her off of the chicken right now. Kona, come! Little Kona, come! Yes, good! So here she goes, yes! I don't even know if you caught that, did you see that? I don't know if she was thinking, hey, I better reconsider that and go back to that dude with the chicken because that's what's working for me. Jumping up here isn't doing much. Kona, come. Intercepting the behavior before it happens. I mean, maybe I'll put it a little bit closer now just to make it a little more challenging for her. I mean, I really want to spell it out. I ought to be able to put that whole plate of chicken right in front of her and not have her touch it at all. Kona, come. Good girl. Yes, thank you for leaving it alone. In fact, that gives me an idea. Leave it alone. Look at me. Yes. Ah. Look at me. Yes, good girl. Kona, come. Yes. Oops. Come. Yes. No, go back. Nope. Kona, stay. Sit, stay. Inertia, back up, keep going. Lie down, stay. Kona, come. 
Yes. Okay. Okay. Good job, guys. Nice work. Good example there. So the point of this isn't to do some flashy trick. The point of this is to really burn it into our puppies' brains that, okay, when mom or dad says leave that alone, they really mean it. And if I pay attention, life is gonna go absolutely perfect. But if I go for it, well, they're gonna take it away. Perhaps life isn't as good as it could be if I just listened in the first place, right? So by putting it on the floor, it's less likely that she's going to encounter that in real life. But you really want to do your best in these training sessions when your puppy is ready for them to have those training exercises exceed the difficulty of what they would encounter in real life. So that way you'll know where their threshold is. These types of normal puppy behaviors where they're trying to go and get things that we'd rather they not do really need to be met with lots of consistency, lots of management. Try to avoid putting your dog in the position of wanting to jump up and steal things. But at the same time, be proactive about really teaching them that, hey, there are gonna be times in your life where you're gonna encounter things that you want to get and you need to know that by default you leave things alone in the world unless we give you permission to take them. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Yes. Acknowledge when your dog goes, looks at the table, doesn't jump up when you can as well. So by giving that feedback to them over an extended period of time so that they begin to really understand it, you're gonna set yourself up for success much quicker. It's worth mentioning, we don't always use treats with dogs as they mature and as they learn these basic concepts, but when they're this young, we really wanna go out of our way to be generous with our currency so that we can get through to them as early as possible, especially on essential things like leaving our food alone when we put it on the counter. And so to phase out treats over time, I'll reward her a little less frequently. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and reward her with a toy either. So as we get closer here, you can see she's thinking about it. Hey, that's really good. Yes, good. And so we'll go ahead and toss the super chewer toy and let her play good, get some tug going, good. There's another thing that I've been wanting to cover with her since she's still going strong right now. I was hoping to start introducing the concept of a retrieve to her. That's where they go and pick up an object because you say, hey, go get me that newspaper or go get me that shoe or go get me that toy, which is where I like to start with this, something that they're already comfortable picking up. This is the kind of thing I have no idea how far we're gonna get or if she's even gonna do it. I don't even know if she feels like fetching really good right now. So let's see how Kona does with fetch. Well, can I have this please? She's doing great with tug, that's for sure. Go get it. Come on, let's go. Let go, yeah, good girl. Good, ready, go get it. Kona, come on, let's go. Yes, good. I just wanna do a mini game of fetch here for a sec. Kona, come. Yes, good, play tug, just keep it really fun. She's into this toy, very good. So she's got all of the elements of a retrieve, except we now need to change one variable. What's that variable? Instead of throwing it, we're gonna ask her to pick it up while it's still. Let's just see what happens. Let's get a baseline. I mean, maybe she'll pick up on it just with a real obvious request. Stays looking good. Leave it, uh, look at me, it's looking great. Go get it. Okay, get it. Not quite, she's not really putting it together, is she? Good, oh my good girl, yes, good job. I'm trying to uh, reward with the toy here since she's really in play mode rather than food, so that's why I went and picked it up and rewarded her. I rewarded her because she went over to it and then she came back to me. She just forgot to pick it up, kind of the most important part, but that's okay. She's brainstorming and trying, and so I wanna keep her into the training session. She's really on the right track if you think about it. Okay. Come on, almost. What's this? What is this? Come on. Kona, come. Good girl, there we go. So, good, get it. I'm gonna let her chase it there. Even that mini game of fetch is a reward for her. You can see we're, we're getting little tiny bits of effort in here, but still nothing that really resembles a full-on retrieve. Okay, get it. Kona, come. Come on. Come on. Good girl, yeah, good job. Arr. I mean, you can see what, that was a little bit better, right? She picked it up, brought it back a few inches. The light bulb hasn't gone off, but she's trying. I can't really expect Kona to just walk up to the toy away from me and figure out that she's supposed to pick it up and bring it back. So I really want to walk her through every step in a way that she can understand. So we have the toy over here. 
Come on, good, yeah, good. Come on, bring it to me. Just like we're teaching fetch, remember? What's this, come on. Get it, get it. Get it, come on, let's go, yeah, good. Nice job, <laughs> nice job, girl. Yeah, whoo. Okay, stay. Okay, get it, get it. Yes, good, yeah, good girl. You can use food to teach a retrieve, but I personally would not use food to ever teach a fetch because the whole spirit of fetch is pure play, not just performing a task, whereas a retrieve is more of a task. So you can see how we'll transfer this to more useful items at some point in the future, perhaps, and whether or not you actually need your dog to retrieve things, it's a really good skill building exercise to teach them how to think and better interact and communicate with us, their people. All of you can get a free BarkBox, Super Chewer Box, or both by going to my special link and signing up for a six or 12 month plan. I'll have those links in the description. Subscribe to this channel, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and get both of my books too. I'll have all the links below. See you guys next time.